Welcome to the Deerfield Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Today's March 21st, 2019. Uh, I want to remind everybody that this is being videotaped. Um, first thing we need to do is review the minutes from last meeting. And I know there's some corrections yeah. that need to be made. Yep. So you want to make a motion to remove the um, in the first paragraph of the Deerfield Industrial LLC meeting, it states that the curb cut was pre-existing and Deerfield Industrial wants to get the driveway paved and open for use. And we just need to eliminate the driveway to get the driveway paved because it already is paved. So we're just going to make a motion to remove that. Second it. All in favor? I'm reclusive. Oh, you're yeah, reclusive. Yep. Uh, okay. So we'll remove the um, get the driveway paved portion of that um, first paragraph. And the only other thing I see is um, the Chairman Adidic Paul Oshesky's name spelled incorrectly. I penciled in the correct spelling, and uh, we can make that correction as well. So with those corrections made, do we um, have a motion to accept the minutes? Do in favor? Yeah. No? Okay. So we'll accept the minutes from the last meeting. Those two corrections. Okay. So the first um, item on the agenda this evening is um, Charles Beto, 117 Old Main Street in Deerfield. Um, the applicant requests relief from sideline setback of 10 feet to 3 feet on pre-existing grandfathered lot. The purpose is for the construction of a new addition and the remodel of an existing garage construction of new second floor bedrooms over the existing garage and new first floor addition. Charles here, would you like to come up to the table and, and give us um, some information or overview of what you want to do? Sure. Um, uh, Guy and Sarah Audrey, who are the property owners, approached me earlier in the year uh, to draw up the plans for this edition. Um, I subsequently got the, a copy of the site plan that was originally surveyed, that was originally done by, by Harold Eaton Associates. And um, when, it, you know, when I looked at that site plan, it was clear that they didn't meet the setback requirements. Um, we then, uh, well, the guy and Sarah um, approached the immediate abutters uh, to um, make an offer to uh, purchase additional land so that the variance would, would not be required. However, that uh, offer was, was declined. Uh, so our, um, which is uh, the reason why we're applying for the, um, for the variance. Okay. Um, and the, um, and uh, it's the, uh, the Audrey's uh, did a, um, a major remodel of their, of this building, which they purchased, I believe in 2015. And so um, the, uh, it was initially suggested that um, if we, um, to, to build the, the addition, the dimensions that they would like to build it, uh, and they were to meet the setback requirements, um, would encroach considerably on the new work, which has only very recently been done. And also the way the, 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 the way the existing building is, dis, you know, uh, um, the structure of, of the roof and the existing garage doesn't doesn't did not lend itself to being for the new addition being able to to fit in any in any satisfactory way. Uh, so, uh, which is again another reason why we'd prefer to apply for the for the variance if possible. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Bob? 
Uh, you said there was an addition built on in, in 2015. They did a they did a, uh, a small addition on the north end of the building, and they did an extensive remodel of of the interior of the house. So did they encroach more on the neighbor at that time also? I don't believe so, um, because their the distance they met all the setback requirements for the addition that they added on the north end of the property at that time. The north end. And now, so the garage is, I don't know, I haven't got the plan in front of me. So. so here's the existing dwelling. The addition that they put on was at this end of the building. Yeah. And this is the, the new proposed addition. So this is the south side here? Correct. Actually, uh, yes. And this is where you want to put the new addition. Correct. Why can't you put it over this way a little bit more? Well, um, uh, I can sh I can show you a photograph of what that part of the building looks like if it would be helpful. Yeah, might be. Because it looks like uh, I don't know what the dimensions are in the building, but. Uh, Right here yeah. is this door. Okay. So, and this is the gable end of the existing house. Yeah. This, so it's a flat gable end. And so if the, two things, if the new addition is moved. It's gonna block these windows. And these are all brand new windows and all of the space is new. Yeah, it's a bathroom there probably. Uh, these are the stairs going up to the second okay. floor. And also the tie-in, rather than being you know, from a structural point of view, a simple uh, uh, connection of a get to the gable and this tie-in with the valley on a on a slate roof and adjacent to this dormer would be a lot more uh, Sorry. complex from a from a structural. Standpoint. So the your hardship is to do. What is your hardship? Because the board's going to have to find that you have a hardship to. The variance. You asked for a variance, right? Um, <clears throat> it depends on what your definition of hardship is. State statute defines it. I'm, I'm not an expert at it. I mean, I, I, don't, I, heard I, don't, I don't have the experience to know how, how in this situation, how hardship is, is defined. But the applications well, for a variance, correct, Frank? Yes. Yeah. I'll read the other. Yeah, construction of a new addition and remodel of an existing garage construction, new second floor bedrooms over existing garage and new first floor addition. And you want a variance for relief from the sideline setback from Correct. ten feet to three feet. Good. Now, where are you going to put the garage right behind here, too, or is it over on the south side? This is the existing, these, this is a, a, a garage, and then this is like a, a, sh a smaller shed off of the garage. And, and so this is going to be an additional garage here? No, this is going to be living space. The garage will stay a garage. Yeah. The first floor is additional living space. The second floor would be additional bedrooms. Is there going to be any bathrooms in the garage? No. No, there, there, are, uh, there are two full bathrooms, one on the first floor and uh, one on the second floor. So there are no additional bathrooms in the proposed addition. Is there the bathrooms in the garage? No. No. Okay. So the bathrooms are on the second, is the bathroom on the second floor be connected by a hallway? Correct. Yeah. So the bedrooms will access, uh, there will be a new hallway. What's the reason for the addition? 
Uh, they would like to have uh, larger bedrooms for their children. They have two young children. And um, that would free up some, some spare rooms on the, on the second floor, as I understand it. So the people that are building this addition for the use aren't here tonight? Sorry, can you say that again? The people that are going to be using the addition aren't here tonight? No, they're, they're away. They're on vacation. I'm their agent. You're their agent? Yes. And you, so you're not the property owner? No, I am not. I have a question. When was this, uh, when was this bought? When, when did, did they, they purchase this property? I believe in 2015. Before the addition was put on or after the addition was put on? Well, they purchased, they purchased the property, again, I believe in 2015. And not long after they purchased it, they, they remodeled the house. Um, and then they, after the remodeling work was done, which, which, was, which was fairly extensive, they moved in. Sir, I think the issue that I have personally is that there's no hardship. In order for us to grant variance, there needs to be some type of hardship. Yeah. yeah. As in, you know, they need a first floor. A hardship would be I'm expanding my house because I need a first floor bedroom because I can't walk upstairs anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and <clears throat> personally, I, I could not argue that, that denying this uh, or allowing this, you know, um, you know, accommodates any kind of any kind of hardship. You know, I, I personally, I, I can't see how I could argue that. Questions? Bob, you also have questions? Well, I'm just trying to visualize this, mm -hmm. Frank. Uh, the abutter to the south is. To whom is that? Yes, what's uh, Phil Zia, who I, I believe is here. Okay. Yeah, I'm right here, but the abutter is. Actually, the Stork Does the Stork Deerfield have any objection? Well, I'll uh, call. I'll oh, have. all right. Yep. So, we're all set with questions then. Thank you. And um, I'll ask anybody um, in the audience who wants to come up and come to the table and put their name and put the board here any. Um, Objections to this. So, uh, your name, sir. First, I'll identify myself. I'm mm -hmm. Philip Zay. Last name is spelled Z-E-A, uh, and I'm the CEO of Historic Deerfield. And also, just coincidentally, um, my wife Betsy and I are in company housing in the Historic Deerfield house that abuts the Aubrey's place. And um, so, Guy and I have talked about this uh, at some length. And we're good neighbors, and actually we were on the phone uh, just a couple nights ago talking about this. So, so to answer the question of a couple minutes ago, um, Historic Deerfield really uh, has no protest because um, I think, as I understand it, the, the addition that they're proposing, uh, most of it is occupied by the footprint of the current garage area with the exception of an addition out the back to the west. And that's part of the problem because the, the, um, the line of the building uh, is not parallel to the house lot. Mm -hmm. So in adding the section to the rear, that's what comes closest to, the, uh, to our property line. Yeah, I'm to, seeing 3.1. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just, it's not even the width of a lawnmower. Right. So, it still, it still looks like it's under 10 feet yeah. at the garage. Right. Yeah. You want to see this? this yeah. This is what he's talking right here. Where the addition comes close to the bottom. So as I say, I'm not, I'm not yeah, I really in okay. protest, right. but as from a fiduciary point of view and looking to the future, I guess that's our primary concern that, you know, uh, good property lines make good neighbors and vice versa and, and we, we don't want any conflict with anybody down the road either so so it's a it's a close call that's what it amounts mm -hmm. to yeah. uh, I 
I think to abide by the statute, they have to present a hardship. That's my first issue. And my second issue is, like you said, the future. You add two bedrooms over a garage, and then that's the big project that gets everybody's attention. Next thing you know, there's a bathroom in there, and now it's an apartment. Actually, it doesn't have 50 feet of frontage. It only has 48 feet of frontage. Mm -hmm. But then again, it may be a way in existence, too. So, but there's, there's no, I don't know if he could feasibly relocate those bedrooms to the other side of the lot, whether it would work mm -hmm. or not work. Okay? But, so, I mean, it's a, they have to make an argument <coughs> that, that will suffice an appeal because if somebody appeals it and say they didn't justify the hardship, then the board would be find fault with. You know, so. We also have any quick more questions for you're all set. Thank okay. You. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Hi, my name is Kip Camosa, and I was just curious. There is no existing building within this 10-foot buffer zone. It's only the new addition. Is, is that correct? No. No, it's, it's already closer to the Part of it's already closer, Kip. There is a part? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so do they want to move it closer than mm -hmm. what the existing is? Right, because it's skewed to the property line. So as okay. they bring it back, it gets a little bit closer. Thank And this is what he wants to put on, okay? Yep. And it gets down to really right. close there, right? Okay. But it's also, that's not very big there. Right. And out here it's only got 48 feet. Right. Okay. So this is sort of a detail. Um, you know, here are the garages, which is, which is this part of the building. Right. And this is an existing dwelling. And this is the, so this is existing. This is what's shown here. Right. And this is the proposed. Uh, addition. Okay, thanks. That's my question. I, I would say if they could show a hardship and they were restructing, reconstructing on the exact footprint, that might be a different consideration. But since they're actually moving closer and stuff like that, there's a choice, and the, the choice was, you know, it would be easier for us. And if this type of thing is allowed, other people could keep doing it. Well, it's easier for me to go here, or I just want a bigger room. And also, if they construct something that's that close to the property line, I can foresee if their neighbor decides to put a fence up at some time, then all of a sudden, geez, now I can't get through with my lawnmower. I can't put a ladder up to paint my house or fix, clean the windows. It can create a lot of other issues that are unintentional. Then all of a sudden, the neighbor who decides to just put up a fence is now a bad guy because these people can't take care of things. And I think you might see more of this coming your way if yeah. it's allowed. That's all. Thanks, Thanks Skip. Any other comments or questions? Okay, at this time, I'll um, close this. Oh, Bob. Do you want to give him the opportunity to withdraw? I'm, I was going to. That's yes. before yep. we close the hearing? Yep. Yeah. That's all. Okay. So before I close the, the meeting to the public, um, if you would like to respectfully withdraw the application, um, try to re redesign something or present another plan that wouldn't involve the three-foot boundary problem, you can before we close the meeting and go to a vote. Um, if it doesn't pass, you've got two years before you can reapply. For a variance? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Is there, you may not be able to answer this question, but if we withdraw the proposed new addition, can, uh, can a second floor be added over the existing footprint of the existing garage? I think that'd be a question for the building commissioner. Um, so that's not a zoning, that's not a zoning issue. 
I, he would. I, I think he would want to see the plans, mm -hmm. you know, minus the addition close to the boundary. Um, and, and then you can re revise your application and uh, resubmit it. And if you withdraw it, you withdraw it without prejudice. Right. Right. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's up to you. And um, is if if we pursue, if we go to a vote mm -hmm. and pursue this, uh, um, you're saying we, we uh, there's a two-year period before we can yes. we can resubmit. Reapply, yeah. uh, would that prohibit us submitting a design for uh, a remodel to add to the to the second floor? I, I don't on? believe so because you're looking for a variance from the property line. Yeah. Um, if you're asking to just put an addition on, I don't think that would be the same. Okay. But yeah. don't so, quote me, I think talking to the building commissioner yes. would be yeah. the um, he, he would determine if you need to come back to us and resubmit a plan. The second application would be substantially different than the first right, one. Right. So if he lost on, he probably could resubmit in my mm -hmm. opinion. Because yeah. what he'd be proposing would be substantially different. Because mm -hmm. he wouldn't be making the encroachment any right. worse than what currently exists. Um, I think... Uh, I would prefer to consult with the owner. I'm not in a position to make that decision without the owner's consent. Okay. Uh, so I think the, the what I'm hearing is uh, um, I could. Um, I, well, first of all, I would um, uh, want the owners to be aware that if we continue to move forward with this request. For the variance, and it's uh, uh, not approved, then we're, um, we have to maintain a two-year hiatus until we can reapply. Right. Um, and it would give me an opportunity to discuss with the mm -hmm. building department uh, what our options if we simply want to add a second story over the existing footprint. And I have not done discuss that with the building department as of yet. Yeah. So I think the um, my answer would be to withdraw at this time okay. and have further conversations with the owner okay. and the building department and then and back on the basis of those mm -hmm. conversations uh, reapply or yeah. the withdraw. Okay. Thank you. Bob? Will we accept the applicant's request to withdraw without prejudice the application? Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the, the second um, item on the agenda is the, a continuance of the Deerfield Industrial LLC, South Deerfield Mass. Applicant requests a driveway approach from the site of Atlantic Furniture Inc., located 5 Industrial Drive West to Route 116 Sunderland Road. Driveway to be used to alleviate truck and vehicular traffic at Industrial Drive West and provide a second means of ingress, egress for emergency vehicles. So I, I think at this time, um, Bob Decker has to recuse himself. Um, Adam did not have the opportunity to 
to watch the video from the, the prior meeting. So that only leaves three of us to vote, and we cannot come to a um, conclusion with only three votes. We need four, and if there were four, it would have to be a majority. So we're going to have to to reschedule this until um, Adam watches the video and we have a forum. When would your next meeting be? Um, I mean, just, I mean, just yep. Um, we, I can, um, we can schedule for next Thursday, a week from today, and I'll check in the office. And I will not be available next we'll Thursday. Okay. I will be in New Hampshire. Yep, I will be snow mailing in New Hampshire on April 4th. Let me just check my calendar here to see what we have for dates. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Does the LLC people have a traffic study that they can show us? I have some information I can present. Okay, so you don't have a st traffic study? I do not have a traffic okay. study, but I have other information. Okay. Yeah, I, I, well, why, don't we, why don't we just uh, move, move this ahead then, because we can't vote on it, and it doesn't sound like you have what we asked for the last meeting, so. Thursday, April 4th, 7 p.m. I will be here. That's the first Thursday of the month, I'm sorry. What did we withhold it last? To do the second and fourth. Yep, second. All right, so why don't we do, apologize, why don't we do Thursday, April 11th? I'll be The here. last, um, I'll be available for yeah, sure. At the last meeting, we had decided that the second Tuesdays of the month work the best for all of our members, so that way we'd be assured that we could be, you know, could could go to a vote that evening. So April 11th. Yes. Okay. Thursday, April 11th. Hey, Mr. Chair, just so uh, on April 11th we could uh, go forward. I'll, I'll definitely watch yep. the uh, other meeting, but. You know, can we ask that if uh, the applicant submits anything administratively, we can have those documents in advance so we can review them if it's a traffic study or whatever it is from Mass DOT. Okay. Hopefully we'll have something we can have it set up on the table or in the office. Mm -hmm. or, or email yeah. would be yeah. perfect. Okay, sorry about that, but thank you. Thank Thursday, you. the 11th of April. All right. Thing is supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, what are they actually applying for? I mean, they're going to Bob. Yeah, but he can't discuss it. Yeah. Well. So we're um, we're down to the correspondence, Bob. Reviewing correspondence. The only thing we have here is a um, certified mailing that was returned to an abutter of um, the Deerfield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Unopened? Unopened. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
sit down so we can adjourn? Or are you good? You want me to help you adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor of adjourning. Aye. Aye.